Have you ever wondered how you can make your own CPU or microcontroller? Have you ever been curious about field programmable gate arrays, also known as FPGAs, but find them to be mysterious black boxes? Or wish you had a microcontroller-like device with a larger memory address or wider data bus? Well, stay tuned as we delve into the world of FPGAs and create a CPU and eventual microcontroller from scratch. Hello and welcome to 100 Random Tasks. I'm your host, Philip Lett. And if you like what you see here, please give us a like and leave a comment. And subscribe if you want to be notified when more videos are uploaded, and it would really help the channel. In part one, we went over the outline of the first basic CPU and created a Hello World program consisting of a 4-bit counter using Verilog and running it on my Spartan breakout board. I'll leave a link in the description to that video below if you are interested. In part two, I'm going to create the 8-bit register module, which will be used a total of five times in a simple CPU. So let's get started. If we look back at the outline, we can see that there are a number of registers necessary for the CPU to function. The address register, the program counter, data register, instruction register, and the accumulator, all of which are 8 bits wide. To begin with, I'll make a 1-bit register to show its operation, and then change it to 8 bits. After that, I'll place it, the registers into the CPU design. Looking at just the address register, it can be seen that it needs an input, an output, an edge triggered clock, and a load enable. In addition to these, it also needs a reset function. I haven't drawn it here to keep this outline clean, but it will be added to the module for all of the registers. So with that, let's get into the software side of things and see how we can create these registers using Verilog. Okay, here we are in the IDE again, and I've created a new project called Register Testing. And in this project, I've set and created a schematic as the top level, as well as I've created an empty pin constraints file to locate the pins where I want them. Otherwise, the program will place the I.O. pins wherever it decides, and I'd like to control that. So let's go ahead and create the register module. First, I'll create a new Verilog file. And I'll call it register one bit. Next, I'll add the input, output, clock, load, and reset labels. Now it generates an empty module for us. First, I'll change the output label to a register so that the module will hold the value of the output between clock cycles. Then I'll add the code to control the register. And that's it. What this says is that if the clock goes low to high, or the reset goes high to low, do the if statement. The reset is independent of the clock, and if it goes low, the output will be reset to zero. If the reset is high, then if the load pin is high, then the input is transferred and saved to the output. Short and simple. So now let's create the schematic symbol for it. And now let's add it to the top level of the schematic and connect the inputs and the outputs. Finally, we'll set up the constraints file to locate the physical pins. Next, I'll implement this design.
With the implementation correct and complete, we can generate the programming file. Now in the impact software, I'll initialize the chain. And select the configuration file for the Spartan and bypass the prom for now. With that done, I'll program it. Right now the input, load, and reset lines are low, so the output should be low because of the reset. If I move the load and the input high and cycle the clock, it should stay low. Which it does. Now if I set the reset high and cycle the clock, the output should go high, which it does. If I then set both the input and the load to low and cycle the clock, it should stay high because the load is low. Which it does. Lastly, I'll set the load high with the input low and cycle the clock. And it changes to low as expected. So this proves that the register is working. Now I'll go back into the IDE and create the 8-bit version and start placing them into the final simple CPU design. Here I've started the simple CPU project where I will build the final design. In that I've again created the schematic for the top level and the pin constraints file. As before, I'll add a new Verilog file for the register. If we remember back to the outline, the AR, DR, IR, and ACC registers are identical, but the PC register has the addition of this PC increment line. So let's go ahead and create a new file with, for the program counter and the code for it. You can see from this that it is the same except for the addition of the increment case, which will simply add one to the output when the increment line is high. I've gone ahead and created the schematic symbols for the register base as well as the register program counter. So let's go ahead now and place them in our final CPU design.
Okay, I've gone ahead and connected the common lines between all the registers, the reset line and the clock lines, as well as the beginning of our internal data bus, which will connect everything together. In addition, I've also gone ahead and created the labels for all of our load lines and our increment line on our program counter. Last thing to do for today will be to add our output buffer, our tri-state output buffer, to our memory bus. At this point, all the registers are placed into the design with the connections needed so far. In part 3, I will demonstrate the multiplexer, which we will need to control which register has control of the internal data bus, which is important because only one register can have control of the bus at any given time. Then I'll add it to our final design. And if you've made it this far in the video, thanks for watching and subscribe to see future videos. See you next time.